Hey floss tube friends, this is Silly Notion Stitcher back again for another floss tube. And today I have a winter whip parade. Um, can't believe I'm gonna be doing my first whip parade for you. Um, and just wanted to say thanks for subscribing. I'm so excited by the number of subscribers that I've had and that my views keep growing. So that's um, exciting and, and fun to join this community um, on Floss2. Um, I will be um, attending StitchCon in June and I'm in Weekend B. So if you're going to be someone that I'll be meeting, I would love to um, see a comment. And uh, yeah, I have to plan for that. There's um, a smalls exchange that I'm going to do. So I need to pick what I'm going to stitch for that and get that going. But um, yeah, so today we're going to do the Winter Whip Parade. And I just wanted to um, say again that um, I'm in sort of like southeastern central Pennsylvania area. I'm not too far from the edge of Lancaster County and um, have been cross stitching for a little over two years now. So I really am still, I put myself in that beginner category and there's just so much I want to stitch that I do try to stitch quickly and um, you know not to compare myself but I'll look at um, people stitching on Instagram and things like that and I'm like wow you know like there's some stitchers out there that are so their stitches are consistent and they look great and I'm um, still finding that I'm you know, bouncing around with different colors of cloth that I've chosen, um, different eight accounts that I've chosen. I've dabbled with realizing, hey, changing the needle size really can improve the way the stitches look or how easy it is to stitch on things. And I'll talk about that on, on a few of the charts. Um, so trying not to compare myself too much that um, we all are on our own stitching journey and just doing what we enjoy. So I um, I do follow <laughs> sort of Kimberly Jolly's mantra though. She said probably, it's probably like two years ago already where she's like, you know, I just, I like to go fast. I have to stitch so many things and I need to be able to stitch quickly. And it was probably around a conversation of trying to transition to linen and or even weave and um, I think she's definitely doing a lot more of that I would love to do that I've said that before um, but if it's going to slow me down because I have a learning curve to do then I sort of go back to what I'm comfortable with and what I can stitch quickly I sat down the other day to write out my whips and I have about 70 maybe 71. So a lot because I do series. I, I love Country Cottage Needleworks. I'm really into the houses. So I'm doing Main Street. I'm doing Glitter Village, so Snow Village, and not doing all of them, but enough that it is adding to my whip count. So um, I did want to, before I got started, I don't do whip go. I am need to be a little bit more unstructured um, because sometimes if something is on the schedule and it doesn't appeal to me then I'm gonna feel guilty or just a negative reaction to it and I don't I don't want to feel that way so um, and I have to be structured enough in my work day so I did want to share that I am um, a happy planner user and this is the um, disc what they call the like a disc system of binders and you can find them at Joann's and Michael's um, and definitely online so it's the happy planner and I've learned that their accessories seem to be branded under different names that will fit this type of system so there's create 365 there's um, there's another one that I see like me and my big ideas so I have lots of stickers and what I did this year, I saw the ideas from the Colorado uh, Stitcher, <laughs> who people have been talking about on their floss tubes, where they took their book of days 
and they're going to FedEx or wherever and they're getting the spiral bound made out of it. Last week for New Year's, I sat down and I, I did do it manually. It didn't take me too long, but I cut my book so that it would fit my planner. And I'm super, super excited about this because it totally blends a little fun into my morning when I am getting started and, you know, oh, what do I have to crank out today? I can come, come to this and fill out what did I do last evening? How did things go? So, um, not a lot of stickering just yet, but, um, I'm really excited that I got to do that and that it worked out okay. So, um, okay, so moving on to my prior finishes before we get into the whips. Um, sticking with pretty much a winter theme. So one of my whips that I'll be showing is the um, Prairie Schooler button up, I believe, um, set of charts. And made by Michelle McGraw, oh my gosh, she turned me on to this set of charts, but then modifying the colors. Oh my gosh, when I saw what she did with adding the blue, um, otherwise this would be, you know, like red, red and green. And these kids would be in their red and green with Prairie Schooler colors. Um, I decided to go ahead and change the colors and I absolutely love this. And this is on a, um, Kind of like an opalescent um i don't know if that will show up but anyway i am continuing to do a few other charts and i'll be showing those now what is kind of crazy is how small these turned out you can see they're sort of like a little postage stamp i did a pillow tried to do a pillow finish and didn't finish them yet because i think i'm actually going to take them apart and build them out a little bit. I think I want to put more of a border on and make them larger. I really, this is another aspect of being more of a newbie is I'll start to stitch something and I'll think I have an idea of how big it's going to be or the size. And I'm finding that it seems to trend smaller than what I, what I think it's going to turn out to be. Um, when I look at these stitches, I'm really quite happy for them part but um and then I picked a fabric that I had um an extra piece of and it's got sparklies to it but again I'm gonna take those apart but I am aiming for the same type of feel for the whole set that I'm gonna be doing here is another um cutest cutest little ice skate and this is from one of Lori Holt's um packs her stitch cards and um, I'll probably finish this one off. Um, it'll be a really small pillow for my, for my wintry bowl. So that's those. And then I have these prior finishes that are from the Country Cottage Needleworks. I really hope my words are showing up the correct way for you all. Um, so this was the sampler. I always forgot how this was named the calendar sampler um, it came out in 2020 I believe so this was January this was probably my first fully finished well not quite but first fully finished that I was really excited about and what I do is I have a magnet on the back and I have um, one of the items from Hobby Lobby, the, the frames were so hard to get at the time that this became popular. So the frames that, you know, go with it um, were not available from like Fat Quarter Shop. There was such a long wait for them. So I got an easel that has sort of a chalkboard back and um, put a magnet on there and then the washers on the back so I can change them out. And just wanted to show you that these are just little pins. Um, so I did, yeah, I glued, I glued this on here. Um, and then this is just a piece of felt that I got to cover the back and then 
did some pins on those um, ribbons. Okay, oh wow, we're already 10 minutes in and <laughs> I've gabbed quite a lot already. So this is February, which was my absolute favorite one with the lovely cakes, the hearts, and then had to add the Rick Rack to it. Oh, and I had some fabric that I had used on some table runners that are Valentine's Day oriented. Oops, we have a little wrinkle action going on. And um, made a covered button. And same with Megan on the back. So, little wrinkly at the glued area, but it's just fine. March. Cute, cute, cute leprechauns. Oh my gosh. And I was really pleased with how my bow turned out. I made that myself. Um, oh, the story with this, and, I'll, and I tell my friends, and they're just like, wow. So this was really at the height of COVID 2021, early 2021. We weren't really going out much um, at that time that I was working on this. And I didn't have a lot of Ada, and so I had this, but it wasn't dark enough to, um, I was always having trouble having the white show up. So I found green tea in the cupboard. And of course for, you know, St. Patrick's Day, you have to have a green, greenish tint to your thing. So I did a tea dye, but with green tea. And so it does have a little bit of a green uh, you know, hue to it. Um, this was old thrift store rick rack that I found, and I had the cutest <laughs> sort of three blind mice type fabric that are also cactus, cacti looking, and again, the magnet. And then the last one that I have that's fully finished is July. Uncle Sam's adorable adorable I did switch out the colors on some of these the floss colors um, I did not use quite all of the called for so on this one I made the blue um, a different brighter blue so that is that so I do have quite a lot um, to still do I have Eight more months that are still not quite finished so hopefully they will be items I'll be showing in future episodes all right so let's move on to the whips shall we um, so here we go all right so this is a design that I saw in the just cross stitch magazine <laughs> somebody will help me out with the title um, this was from, I think, the Christmas going into 2021. It was that episode. And, um, that episode, that magazine edition. So there's a bit more to be done over here. I think there's, like, another cottage. And there's definitely the cutest gondola in the design. More skis and probably more snow. So I, I do need to get back to this. Um, I think I would be a lot faster with it now. I remember um, working on this and feeling like this was like the first time I had to deal with sort of like a little bit more confetti type to me, felt like confetti type stitching with, you know, changing colors more. And that was really the first time I was getting into stuff like that. So, um, that will be fun to continue on. I did want to just show that um, what I've started doing is finding um, old pins and things that I don't don't really resonate with me to hang. Like this was a refrigerator refrigerator magnet, and it is from Seven Springs in Pennsylvania, which is a place that where I um, did a learning tree uh, ski trip. Um, over 20 years ago and um, so it's cool that this magnet has stayed intact and I'm thinking that I'll probably use use it somehow in the finishing so we'll see um, 
I'm not going to show you my floss because it's quite sad the way that's working right. All right, so we are moving on to here's a Valentine's but Valentine's Day bag that I did and did very very quickly. Like this is actually loose fabric here. It's not supposed to be that way. Um, pink inside, so I could actually turn it inside out, and I I was doing that for um, some like spring. Eastery type stitching. So I decided to do the Cherry Hill stitchy, stitchery, um, the Valentine's um, sow. So, oh gosh, and I can't show you this because it's the chart and not. But if you're doing it, it's Happy Valentine's Day, Cherry Hill Stitchery um, by Dina Carter. And it's a very cute, um, happy Valentine's Day quick stitch. I think it's about like four by six inches. And um, so this is on a petite point. Um, I think it's, I think it's 20 count and um, has sort of like a mocha color to it. There are, of course, hearts in the corners of this, and um, I am using, I happened to get this Cupid floss <laughs> from, um, or in my um, Stitch New England club pack. My very first club pack came probably in November, and so I had to use that. So actually, these are the colors that I decided to go with. There, of course, are called for colors. Um, there's a few leaves in it, and um, I couldn't really decide if I wanted a dark green, so I think I'm going to do a combination. So I've got Creeping Jenny. I should be showing this on a white background. So, I don't know if it shows up a little bit better. Creeping Jenny, Cherry Tomato, Four Leaf Clover, and Cupid. Um, so that's got some really nice dark and medium variegation, variation in there. And um, all by Classic Color Works, which I love. I tend to lean towards that brand if I am choosing my own colors. All right. Then we have this bag. I'm very proud of this bag. This is my curling um, bag that I put together in like record time. The Olympics were starting last winter and I saw this fabric from Lara, Serial Stitcher with Brenda and the Serial Starter. <laughs> Laura, I call you the serial stitcher. You're like finishing like crazy now. So she received this fabric and I was like, I must have it. And um, I really enjoy watching the curling. So this year I added my old ski pins to the bag. I no longer am a skier really. And um, decided to get rid of my jacket, my outer coat. Oh, it's a gondola. So I was able to go to Canada on a ski trip and Vermont um, in Stowe, which was gorgeous. And of course, picked up all these various pins. So this is my bag for a lot of my winter sports type um, stitches. So we've got the Prairie Schooler, January, and the Prairie Schooler button up. And I loved Michelle McGraw's just again made by Michelle McGraw when she changed out <clears throat> the colors in this. Um, it just really livened it up so I needed to do the exact same thing. So right now I am working on um, <laughs> the headless skater. 
uh, I just put in the ice here. It's supposed to be <laughs> light blue because otherwise you'd be um, doing green and red and then the ice was supposed to be light blue. Well, I was already doing light blue here. So I had key lime, is it key lime? No, key largo. Key largo is um, floss that I had. And I'm like, I'm gonna give that a try. So what I did with this was took one strand, put it in half, knowing that it was gonna give me a blend of the light blue in this and the mint green together. Wasn't sure how it was going to turn out. Wasn't sure if I was really going to love it. I'm okay with it. There's going to be more ice on this, but um, I think it works. And then it also blends with that opalescent sparkliness going on. Okay. Um, let me see. I thought that I had... I have this piece, <laughs> Opalescent too, is dedicated to, there is a snow angel that I will be starting if I did not yet do that. Okay. Also wanted to show you this was part of um, the hot cocoa mug. Get some whipped cream there. So I stopped. I think I made a mistake somewhere and got worked up about it. Oh, I know. Part of this in here was supposed to have a design. It was just supposed to be like a herringbone type design or whatever, and I didn't do it. And then I was like, oh, I should really do it. Um, and then I stopped. So I probably could figure that out. Oh, hope you didn't hear my tummy rattling just now. Um, but again, this is um, from Be In My Bonnet Stitch Cards by Lori Holt. So it was part of this set. Just so cute. I just really, I really, really love the skate and the hot chocolate. Um, the, the hat is cute too. I'm not, I'm not a big snowman um, chart person. Although I'm doing Snow Village and there's plenty of snowmen there. Um, but I just wanted to show you as well that I had, when I first started stitching, I um, found these towels. Um, these are from Fat Quarter Shop and I thought they're, they're very good quality. Um, I mean, they're thin, um, but textured and the type of towel I like but of course, then you have sort of like, it's definitely like an Ada more, more so than an even weave. I really struggled with, I'm like, well, how do you know exactly where to start and where to put the chart? Like for something like this, that's on a square, I think I can figure it out now. Um, you know, literally like something that's just a square. Well, of course it gives you the counts and all of the Many of you probably know about Lori Holt stitch cards, but they're all the same dimensions. And then she provides a different border um, per card set. So then they're interchangeable. Um, and I'll show you, I have a new set to show from Hall um, that I could be interchanging with, with these. Oh, now that I do look at this up close, it does look more like an even weave. It's kind of hard to, to show. So I really should make this. It would be so cute with the teal of this. Okay. That might be whip number 72 or so. All right. Moving right along. We are moving into more skiing. This was my very first ski bag that I put together. Um, the curling came the next winter. Now I have moved <clears throat> my snow village in here and I liked snow village from the beginning 
but again the green and the red was just a lot and it wasn't crazy I don't know if it was the pictures I was seeing I just wasn't crazy about the green so much and then I found this washcloth in my stash and I really liked this blue and I liked that green I also was seeing something else that had pink in it so I um, did a little editing or embellishment to my floss colors so now my floss colors <laughs> include some pink include some sort of Kermit type green and I really like this green although I also have been liking this did I just say green and it was blue <laughs> I also like this blue it's making it seem like it's the same as my my top but it is not <clears throat> so I really got a new um, invigoration for this when we were doing 12 by 12 for <clears throat> New Year's Eve and so I have been working on this a lot the other thing that I really figured out on this was that I needed a bigger needle this is fabric flare um, fabric that is the white snow with aqua dyed effect and even though it's 14 count the squares are huge so I was using probably a 24 needle now I believe I'm using a 22 and I just love my stitches so much better um, let's see which stitches <clears throat> these would be my most recent stitches and I'm just liking the white stitches so much better now what I can't decide though is last year I put in this is for the pole for the main snow village um, scene and I'll show that in a minute I was all excited about that color now I'm excited about this color so I have sort of a dilemma um, so this is the snow ball stand so darling this is the popsicle stand this one oh you know what the other one was the snowflake stand this might be the snowball stand this is the frozen or no the hot cocoa stand and what I decided to do with this one was to try to save a little bit of time it was supposed to be stripes across there I just got a variegated DMC that um, had some pink in it and did that I'm not loving how I did the table the table is actually where that blue line is is really supposed to be a line of stitching in the same color as the door and I think I might have to go back to that I'm not loving how I did that with sort of a back stitching approach but I I really do love this fabric and talk about stitching fast it's <laughs> it's very forgiving that way and uh, going very well so the patterns I'm doing in this are Snow Village and that's where those blue tall poles I've made instead of the brown I've I've done with the blue I'll definitely do the brown with the um, trees the tree trunks here's this one This is the snowflake stand. I'm I'm really having a problem 
counting in this swirl area. I jump around too much and that's why. So I'll, I'll continue my white thread down in this corner and then I go up here and then I wind up over here and I should just keep counting up and down and up and down and I think make my life easier. This is the snowball stand. And this is the popsicle stand. So cute. All right. Um, I'll do a real quick show of this. I have selected some of the patterns of the Hometown Holiday series by Little House Needleworks. I might have said Country Cottage Needleworks, but I am doing the post office. The firehouse, which I started on New Year's Eve. The bookstore. Oh boy, that's grandma's house, but it's got the sticker on it. <laughs> the train station. We have a lot of old train stations here in Pennsylvania. Like, I feel like very close to where I live. So it's cool that a lot are being refurbished. Um, the Hopetown Diner. The quilt shop. If you look closely, you'll see me back there behind that center quilt. And the mercantile. So I did start the mercantile as well. This is where I had said in one of my first floss tubes that I am not super prim oriented. And so I've really been enjoying hearing some people tweaking just one or two floss colors and it sort of just livens things up a little bit. I found this fabric that I love and really got turned on to the fact that, oh, that's perfect. Um, the blue in there, sort of that salmony pink color. And I was like, I think I want to do something with that. So I will show you this bag again. This has vinyl in here. I was trying a little something of not putting vinyl in such a big spot um, and used a an orphan quilt block that I had. And so here are some of the called for colors. Oh my. So sorry. Please let me in your community, even though my floss looks like this. But these are some of the blues and pinks that I picked and matched um, for what I want to do in my chart series. So, I really got far. We're talking major, major stitching happening here. Okay, that is my little tiny door for one of the doors in the firehouse. <laughs> and the mercantile... I. I'm not even going to show you because it's so tiny. I don't even know where it is. But this is Fiber on a Whim Oatmeal, 16 count. I've got a huge piece of that. Um, that's showing to me a little bit more green than what I feel like this oatmeal really is. I wonder if I can do it this. Does this make it any better? Okay. So... I feel like it's a little bit, it's definitely darker, but it's more of a camel to me. Yeah. And then I got this large piece of fawn, which is, picture this plus. And I believe this is 16 count. I do find with these over-dyed Adas that they do shrink. And so, you know, you think you're getting a 16 count and you can really use, I've had to adjust my needle the opposite way and, and go down a size. And that's really made 
an improvement for me. Um, oh, there was something I was going to say about this. Picture this plus. But I don't quite remember now. All right. Um, I am looking. Oh, okay. There we go. So. The next one is um, the Buttons and Beads um, Winter Series by Mill Hill. This is called Winter Glow. And I first saw this um, after StitchCon last year. Pam showed the um, small exchange that she received. And I just loved this. I don't remember the, the woman's name who made this for her, but it was just so darling. So I had to have that. However, this was my first Mill Hill kit. I have a few of them, but this is the first one I actually got, like, opened up and tried to use. I am not doing well with the perforated paper. Um, I mean, I just don't like it. I, I need to go faster than, than what it allows. So, I found, um don't remember if this is called bashful blue or like a baby blue this is a Lori Holt um, Ada that I got that first winter that I was stitching and so I started it on this and I like it a whole lot better so that's my start on that and I did just well I started this on the 12 by 12 started this last night after the Eagles won the Giants. We'll just say that. But, um, or beat the Giants, I should say. Alright, and that's it for that pack. And here I've got my win my glitter village. And yet another little village of houses, which I just absolutely adore. All these houses. And um I mean, all these villages that I get to stitch. And there is like a little bit of shininess on the rooftops of these houses. So, just totally went with the theme of Glitter Village. So, these are the ones that I am working on out of this series. And you'll see again, um, I changed my fabric color. So I wanted a little bit more, I wanted the white to show up for one thing. This house, I love this color of the house, but my fabric choice is so close to it that I couldn't use that color. I tried it out, but um, you'll see what I did instead. Love the church, need to finish that. It's almost finished. Love this this oh, love that pink house I did mess up my trees on that house a little bit love this purple color all the houses I just think are so adorable so uh, I don't I don't have the whole series it's nine houses and I chose not to do all nine I think I started all of them. Again, a 12 by 12 adventure. So this is finished. Here is my purple house. Oh my gosh, I just love that purple. Um, <laughs> started one of them down there and I'm gonna have to match up. I, I did match up the other night with number O. Oh. I started writing down the number here so um, yeah I chose this um, aqua I think it was called mint opalescent and I ordered this from fat quarter shop back in 2020 I think I got this during the um, the sale that they had for Black Friday there's my church with a hovering <laughs> steeple not quite finished and that's the color I decided on instead of the green for that house so I do love how this one turned out 
there is a roof and I I'm really trying to squeeze the last houses on this fabric so there's some starts but um, it's gonna get a little tricky in the one section but and I will just show you, too, that I found this um, late summer, I found a quilt, new quilt shop, new quilt shop to me, I believe it was in Maryland, and it's this pink fabric, oh my, it doesn't really show that well, with a paisley, paisley shimmer to it. I wish it would show a little bit better. But I think that will be really cool for the backs of the Glitter Village. Um, so we'll see if I, I really would like to get, you know, one or two of them at least in an FFO state. Um, that was something that I was like, oh, they have to be perfect. The These FFOs for Glitter Village, they just have to be perfect. Well, you start putting yourself in that position and then you don't get it done. So time has passed now that the, you know, there have been various other squirrels that have come along that Gl Glitter Village is still way up here in my stitchy world, but um, I'm a little bit more at ease about whatever the final finish will be. But I will say that the plan is I have some of those like faux window frames. Um, I, I bought two of them and they, they're plastic. I don't love that part. They are sort of um, have some swirl of sparkly gray to them. So that tied into my theme, but they had the little clips in each of the windows. So my plan is with a lot of these villages, I can interchangeably, you know, move, move houses around and move charts around or finish finished objects. Um, all right, we are coming close to the end now. This is a new start. I've had this chart. I think I showed this in one of my other floss tubes and I got this last year. I just think it is so cute and adorable. And I probably should have picked another um, fabric flare because it's like a smooth Ada and it just really, you can stitch really, really fast on it. But this is my start. I really liked the gray. Um, this is almost looking blue kind of, but I needed a gray fabric and I had a few different ones and I just couldn't find the right gray that the white of the snow would show up. But this one is, is working now. So that is how far I've gotten with that. Yes, that's how far I've gotten with that. And here are the flosses. I'm happy to show these because these still look kind of organized, sort of. Um, I should sit down and probably pre-cut these, but this is a color that I really like from the picture, but the number is different than what the called for is. So I do want to take a look at um, the called for and see if I have that. I may want to get that instead. This one is just a little bit on the cooler side. Okay, so that's that. Um, this is another one that I may have shown just love these colors. Here I am like just showing the charts and not saying who they are. Um, these last two are from Etsy. This one's from Al Stitching House. And I will try to put um, some information in the show notes. This is the one that I was really struggling with finding the right gray, but I did decide to work with this because I didn't think it was going to be big enough, but I figured out that it should be. This is called Nocturne um, by Picture This Plus. It's actually pretty dark. And here are the flosses for that. There's not quite all of them are here, 
and this is the same aqua that I pulled some of this for that other chart I just showed. Um, so we'll see if I stick with that. I did want to, um, this is not quite a winter whip, but this is a chart. Unfortunately, when I was working on my button up last year, my, from my curling bag, I was, chose that because I was stitching all those winter sports button up stitches during the Olympics, watching the Olympics. And then immediately after the Olympics, um, Russia decided to invade Ukraine and it was very disturbing. And, um, I just loved being part of the solidarity stitching that happened, um, to support those cross stitchers, um, in Ukraine. This was one stitcher that I found. So I'm pretty sure I got this on Etsy, but I did, um, I started purchasing a bunch of charts because it was a way to quickly support, um, those in Ukraine with Etsy shops. And I continue to follow, um, Katerina is her name and, um, she's stitchy princess. Um, but there's more to her name, I believe. And she's really, really endured. And, um, she should be releasing a new chart. Um, I'm excited to hear about, I can't remember now the name, but the last one she just released was called the ice princess. I believe this new one had an interesting, different theme to it. I totally can't remember what it is, but I really, really, um, encourage, um, those of us in the stitchy community to keep looking out for the charts that are being put out by Ukrainian, um, stitchers and try to keep supporting them. It's just, you know, a year later and what we see has been destroyed. And I know that Katerina had just recently posted within the last few weeks, she did have to totally, she and her family had to totally flee. They were able to, to jockey between shelters and they've got a cat. Her elderly grandmother is living with them. Her grandmother went through this before in decades ago and they did have to totally pick up and move to the Odessa area, I believe. So, um, she's starting over like, like all of them are. So I'm going to move on to Hall, recent Hall. And, um, then we will be finishing up. Wow, this went way longer than I was hoping. <laughs> But again, I joined, um, this is my first club that I'm in and it's with Stitch New England, um, a shop in Massachusetts and Pam from Stitching in the Land of Good Enough. Her floss tube is always fun. She and I have in common that we love, um, our back, backyard pets are, um, feeding the birds. So really enjoy that. But this is my latest floss pack that arrived. Loveliness. All it is a um, classic color works club. So let's see, there's three. Wow, were these all in this one this time? Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, it's ten. I had broken apart my last one, so I couldn't really show them as a group. This is Desert Mesquite. Very cool. Dublin Bay, which is sort of a gray green. Okay, I wish it wouldn't put me in and deep blue sea which i've had before for um i think i'm not sure where that's used <laughs> um dol dolce de leche 
sort of a pinky cream. It's really cool. Eggshell, I've had that before. And embers, which is very bright orange. It's kind of the 70s orange, quite honestly. English Ivy, which I love English Ivy. Erin Go Emerald. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. This would be awesome to use like as a one color in, you know, a sampler chart. You know, like an alphabet or something. Eve's Leaves. Fairly, looks fairly solid throughout, I would say. Not too much variegation. And Fallen Leaves, which is a really nice one to have in the stash. Wow, how lucky am I? All right, and then um, just some pins. Gotta have some pins. I found these on like clearance, holiday clearance. Um, I took a webinar class um, with Linda from Erica Michaels um, last summer, and she talked about that so much with the strawberries with the tops you can you know do with pins um, or at least finish with pins you know you might want to put glue on the pin um, to hold it a little bit more so this how to have it it's um, like little fabric rolls um, in a thimble and I'm thinking well actually I was thinking um, putting it on like as a zipper pull but it would be I need to have it like as a needle minder so that it's more available in my face more often <laughs> and then finally this is the latest set of stitch cards I picked up be in my bonnet set M love the teapot love the teacup love the strawberry and of course more strawberries so that's the last bit of haul for now so thank you for sticking with me hope you are still here you know maybe there's one or two of you left but <laughs> please subscribe if you are liking what you're seeing please like the video I really really appreciate it and um, hope to be back again soon bye bye